In this flip lesson, we're going to go ahead and talk about the eight features of civilization. And this is going to help you out every time we cover a new unit. Um, you'll understand what makes that new that civilization that we're covering an actual civilization and all the features that it has to have in order to be a functioning civilization. It'll also help uh, when we get to the future units, it'll help you understand uh, the ins and outs uh, of those cultures and why they are uh, influential in present day society. Also, make sure that you are filling out your note sheet while you are watching this video. If you need to pause so that you can fill out the sections in your note sheet, by all means, go ahead and do that. Um, just another reminder, on the left column of your paper, you have your questions and topics, and on the right side is the part that you are filling out yourself. All right, so this first part that we're going to go ahead and cover um, is actually a separate assignment that I'm going to give you later on. Just keep in mind you're going to be watching another video, not one of mine, and you're going to fill out uh, a, follow, a video follow-along assignment that goes with it. Okay, to start off with, uh, we're going to talk about our civilization today. Uh, what factors make the, U the United States a successful country? I want you to go ahead and write down on your note sheet three things, and we'll, I'll give you time in class to talk about them. You're going to write up three things that make this country a successful uh, country based on our civilization. So you're going to think on your own. You're going to, when we get back to class, you're going to pair up with your group and discuss your ideas and share what you discussed. So on that first one, two, and three, you're going to go ahead and write down your own ideas. Okay, so first off, we're going to start off with what is a civilization. It's a group of people living and working together for the purpose of creating an organized society. The eight basic features of a civilization are as follows. You need cities, government and laws, writing, specialized jobs or a division of labor, social classes, public works, highly organized religions, and art and architecture. So what's really important about these is that you have all of these working systems so that your civilization can be functioning. So I'm going to go ahead and go over what all of these are so that you understand what each one um, entails. So cities are obviously uh, made of small areas where people live, they work, they shop, they do all of their functioning. Um, we obviously know what cities are. Government and laws, every civilization needs a structure. They need a set of rules to live by so that um, we don't have chaos running around. Writing is important so that we have historical documentations for any sort of purpose. I mean, it can be something as simple as a receipt for your grocery shopping, and it can be something as important as a new law that's going into effect. But writing is a very important aspect of civilization. The next one we have are specialized jobs or division of labor. Uh, societies or civilizations don't function unless everyone has a specialized job that they're able to do. If people don't have specialized jobs, that means that every single day we're constantly trying to go and find our next meal, which doesn't really allow for too much uh, growth as far as a civilization is concerned because um, everybody's out for themselves just trying to find their next meal. So it's really important that we have things where people are dedicated to one specialized job for everyone so that everyone's able to split up and divide what they're doing and our civilization can grow. Next one are social classes. Um, this is really important so for social structure, uh, for the way of people basically just interacting with themselves, with each other. Um, and you see this a lot in ancient civilizations where you obviously see that there's a king, there's nobles, and then there's it trickles down all the way down into peasants and the lower class people. Um, this isn't always the case today. I mean, obviously, especially in the United States, we don't have kings or anything like that, but we do have social classes. If you think about it, the celebrities that you admire or even people that you see on TikTok that are famous on TikTok and YouTube, those are those are in a different social class than the everyday person who doesn't have those that kind of attention. So even something, uh, even our society has shifted. Even today, we still have social classes. Um, the everyday person is definitely not lumped up with somebody who's a social celebrity. 
Um, next one would be public works. Public works are is a kind of a broad category. It has uh, infrastructure projects that are financed and constructed by the government. It could have uh, recreational employment or health and safety uh, reasons. Uh, but basically, it is any sort of infrastructure project that's set up by the government. The next one would be highly organized religions. Um, we see this a lot every day. I mean, we have churches and synagogues and other places of worship all over the place that you can see as you're driving down the street. Um, same thing was in ancient civilizations, although ancient civilizations tend to be, uh, everyone tend to have one unified religion for the most part per civilization. Uh, the next one would be art and architecture. Uh, art is really important for expression and understanding what that time period is like. And the same thing with architecture. We want to know what the people were like and how they lived. And we can see what the differences between a modern structure as opposed to a building that's been there for hundreds of years. All right, so cities. Cities are large towns at the center of the civilization located near major source of transportation with a high population where important buildings are located. A historic example of this would have been developed by rivers. I mean, rivers were extremely important in ancient civilizations because rivers gave you a water supply. Not only that, but water supplies attracted animals, which meant that the more animals came to your water supply, you didn't really have to go around hunting for food. The animals kind of came to the river and that's where you had that source. Um, now today, a modern example of a city would be developed by highways. You want easy access to get to your city and leave the city. Um, so they're kind of developed that way. Um, on your paper, I want you to list similarities and differences that you see in the historic and modern examples. And you can come up with your own. That doesn't necessarily have to be the rivers and the highways that are posted here. Next up, we have government and laws, and this creates and keeps order in society through laws. The government's responsibility is also to provide protection through the military. Um, a historic example would be war and power, and it gets to pick a ruler or a king, um, and that kind of decides who's in charge. Modern example, today we have people that vote for our leader, and um, it's just a little bit different how we have things set up. Uh, what I want you to write for your discussion question on this one is a list of similarities and differences that you see between the historic and modern examples of government and laws. Writing. So a form of communication used for writing records. Writing is used for laws, farming records, religious documents, and so on. Uh, a historic example would be pictures that represent words, so hieroglyphs, um, Cuneiform, anything like that would be an example of a historic example of representation for writing. Uh, today we have modern examples. We obviously have our alphabet uh, and every language has an alphabet. Uh, past, uh, so basically the letters would combine to make words that actually should say present, not past on the bottom. Sorry about that. All right. Um, and for your discussion question, I want you to list the similarities and differences you see between historic and modern examples. Okay, so specialized jobs in divisional labor. labor. Um, so someone that's trained with purpose or knowledge to accomplish a task so the civilization can be successful. An example in uh, past times would be a scribe. Scribes were the writers of early civilizations and then uh, farmers were responsible for feeding the civilization. Everybody had their own specific job to make sure that the civilization grew and was successful. Um, even today, everybody has specialized jobs. We have teachers, we have, uh, we have postal workers, we have the police department, we have uh, people that work for companies. Everybody has their own specialized job to make sure that the entire civilization grows and moves forward. Um, so today, uh, it's, for the modern example, it says paper is easy to use and carry, so it, and it's made of trees, so it makes it a lot easier. Also, with the uh, expansion of education, uh, everybody has access to education, and everyone is able to learn how to read and write today. So for your discussion question, I want you to list the similarities and differences that you see between historic and modern examples of specialized jobs and divisions of labor. Okay, so next up we have social class. Um, we have, it's dividing society based on social economic status and with the upper class at the top and the lower class at the bottom. Um, like I had stated before in the past, the king was always upper class and slaves would be the lowest class in the uh, social class structure. 
Today, um, money determines which so social class you are. You have the upper class, the middle class, and the lower class. And like I had stated before, upper class not only are professionals and doctors and CEOs and politicians, but you also have celebrities that everybody knows who they are. Um, so it kind of ranges as far as what your social class is. But today, it does depend more on how much money you have. So in your discussion question, list similarities and differences that you see between historic and modern examples of social classes. All right, so technology and public works this is the invention created to make civilization more advanced. Um, in the past, they made irrigation systems and how they got water to crops so that they didn't have to constantly pick up water and carry it out and pour it over uh, the crops to water them. They created an irrigation system. Basically, this was um, the ancient version of, of sprinkler system that would water itself. Um, so today's irrigation system and how we get water to crops is on the right. It's a very advanced sprinkler system that moves around and it's able to, wa able to water all the crops a lot easier um, so that we can get our crops and farming so that everyone has access to food. Um, so I want you to list the similarities and differences you see between the historic and modern examples of technology and public works. Okay, so religion is a belief and worship in one or more gods that help explain the world around them. Historic examples, there was a lot of polytheistic religions. This means that they were based on many gods and it helped the civilization explain certain phenomenons and what was going on. Uh, today, we have a lot of monotheistic religions and this is based on the idea that there is one God and this helps individuals reach inner peace. So polytheistic, poly meaning more than one, monotheistic meaning one uh, one God. All right, I want you to go ahead and discuss similarities and differences on your paper uh, that you see between historic and modern examples of religion. All right, next up we have art and architecture, and I want you to, uh, or this is the different styles of structure, construction and art that were added to the buildings to show power and talent of the civilization. Historic example um, would be the unique columns and arches used to create buildings, and they were all made from natural min minerals, so like the Colosseum and all these amazing structures in ancient civilizations that are still standing today. Uh, today, a modern example would be uh, man-made materials. Um, you're going to go ahead and see an example of one on the right today. Okay, and then the I want you to discuss on your paper, write down similarities and differences that you see between historic and modern examples of art and architecture. All right, for this next activity, what I want you to do on a separate sheet of paper, you're going to staple the sheet of paper to your handout and you're going to turn it in in class. Uh, I will give it back to you so that you have it to study from, but I am going to check it off, give you a grade for it and give it back. Um, so on the separate sheet of paper, you're going to write the seven characteristics of civilization in an order that you think is most important. So there is no right or wrong answer. Just make sure that you write why you wrote them in that order. So it's not just listing them. You have to tell me why you put them in that order. Um, one being the most important and seven being the least important in your ideas or your perspective. Okay, so hopefully this uh, explanation on the features of a civilization will help you. Um, the four old world river valley civilizations that we're going to cover, and this is going to explain a lot of the reasons why these civilizations were so important and so influential. Um, the four main ones that we're going to cover are Mesopotamia, which we are starting now, and the main rivers there are the Tigris and the Euphrates. Um, we're going to talk about Egypt, and the main river there is the Nile. We're going to uh, go ahead and talk about India, and that's the Indus and the Ganges rivers. And then we have, uh, uh, we're going to have the Shang Yellow River in China, and that's going to be a major river over there. Um, so keep those, these features of civilization in mind when we talk about these four old world uh, river valley cultures, it's going to make a lot more sense. All right, that's it. Make sure you complete your, um, your note sheet and uh, rewatch the video if you need to or if you don't have uh, all the information. If you have any questions, just let me know in class and we can address them.